Coming September 2022, Topaz Photo AI it combines Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI all into one piece of software. I believe it'll radically change the way we denoise, sharpen, and upsize our images. Today, I want to show you how it works with high ISO images. I have an ISO image of 25,600 shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. We're going to see how it handles noise. Will it have any problems? Stay tuned and find out. Hello and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Before we start and I show you how Topaz Photo AI, the early access version, version 0.5 works with high ISO images. I wanted to let you know the Topaz image quality bundle is on sale right now, which includes Gigapixel AI, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI. It's a $99.98 savings now until August 12th of 2022. But the news gets even better. You can save an additional 15% off that already low sale price by using my promo code David Kelly. And that'll save you another $24 off. Your final price will be $135.99. Plus, you'll also get early access to Topaz Photo AI so you can start using it. It's still in beta, but they're updating it pretty much weekly. But you might say, I own one or two pieces of that software found in that bundle. Not a problem. Just click on that image quality bundle and it'll allow you to complete your bundle at a reduced price. And you can still use my promo code David Kelly and save 15% off that that as well. If you let your license expire on any of those products, you can click on that image quality bundle and you can renew your license right there at a reduced rate and use my promo code David Kelly to save 15% off license renewals. If you decide you want to get the image quality bundle or renew your license or complete your bundle, Click on my affiliate link in the description below. It's going to take you right to this page. Now, this is very, very important, and don't miss a step. You must sign into your account first. So come up here and click on account, and then sign into your Topaz account with your email and password and click log in. After you've done that, this page will come up and you can click on my products and see what products that you own. Scroll back to the top of the page and click on products all products. Click right here on sale for $159.99. Go ahead and click that. And this is where you'll purchase the image quality bundle or renew the license upgrade on any of those products. Don't forget to put the promo code in David Kelly to get that additional 15% off. If you can't see a way to download Photo AI, all you need to do is go back to my YouTube channel under the video that you're watching now and go into the description now. It's important in description. You don't want to click the first link again. You want to click show more. Don't mess up here. Click show more. A lot of people don't do that, but there's a bunch of information here. And you want to come right here. Topaz Photo AI Early Access Download Link. Click on that. When you do, it's going to take you right here. And then you can download either... Photo AI for Mac or Windows, and everything should work. I'm sorry that I had to do this long introduction, but I did it for you because there's a lot of confusion as to how to get this early access version of Photo AI so you can try it out. And I want everybody to be able to try it out. So thank you for bearing with me. And now on to show you how it works with a high ISO image of 25,600. I'm starting out here in Lightroom. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can really see that ISO. I'm zoomed into 800%. Let me back it down to 400%. But you can see this image has a lot of noise in it. And it's horrible. And I want to see if Photo AI can really take care of this. At the end of this, I'm going to show you a comparison between the image that I've already denoised using uh, DxO Deep Prime, and we'll compare it side by side to the result I get back from Photo AI. So stay tuned to the end. You don't want to miss that. Now today I'm using my workflow and my workflow is to do some basic edits inside of Lightroom and then send that image right into like Topaz Denoise AI, Sharpen AI gigapixel AI, but in this case, it's going to be going into photo AI. I'll also be working on a video showing you how to work in a raw format, and that'll be coming up. So don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification. That way you'll be notified when that video comes out. 
And if you like my uh, tutorials, please give them a like, a share, and a subscribe. That helps me to grow my YouTube channel, and I really appreciate that, and thank you. And when you use my affiliate links, I make a small commission, and that helps me to keep all these tutorials coming your way, and I want to thank you for that, too. I'm going to go back to fit to screen. Now, let me show you under develop what I've done here. Under basic, I have no adjustments. It's right out of the camera. I'm just using the Adobe Color Profile. I normally use the linear profile, but if I click that on right now, the image will get real dull, but, but then I would make adjustments. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Adobe standard color profile on it. As far as other adjustments under lens corrections, I have remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections and detail is completely shut off. I'm doing no sharpening, no noise reduction whatsoever. We're going to let Topaz Photo AI do all of that for us. What I want you to notice is how fast this is going to speed up your workflow. You remember when you work with Denoise and Sharpen AI, you have all those different models and you have all those choices and comparisons, but I'm finding with Photo AI, you don't really need any of that stuff, at least for my observations and tests so far. So watch how quick this can speed up your workflow. I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in and find Photo AI. It shows right up here in Lightroom. It'll also show up in Photoshop as well as a plugin. I've had some comments where people don't believe it works as a Photoshop plugin, but it does. Let me show you. Here's Photoshop. I'll come up here to filter, go to Topaz Labs, and right there it is, Photo AI. I can launch it right from here. I'm now back in Lightroom. I'll be editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments. File format will be TIFF. It's a lossless format. I highly recommend it. I'll be using the Pro Photo RGB color space, but you do have choices here. You know, you can use Adobe RGB, your display or sRGB, but I recommend Pro Photo RGB, at least for me. Whatever you use is really up to you. As far as bit depth, you have your choice between eight and 16. I recommend 16. Use the highest bit depth. Resolution, I have set at 300. Now I generally use uh, 360 because I have an Epson printer, but I'm just gonna leave it on 300 for now. And I recommend don't use any compression because remember, this is a lossless format. You do not wanna compress it, in my opinion. And then all you have to do is click edit. And now we're launching Photo AI. Now here's the interface. It's loading the image and notice it's scanning the image. And once it scans it and decides what's wrong with it, it's going to remove noise. In this case, it just determined I have a lot of noise and it's updated the preview right now. But if we look up here, it shows us. And this is something new in this new version. If I hover over uh, subject detected, you notice it found the subject. No faces were detected. This is a mask. And I understand that masking is coming to this product. I don't know when, but I'm pretty sure that's what I understand from what I read. Uh, subject is in focus. Image noise level is severe, which it really is severe. Let me go ahead and zoom into, right now we're at 100%. Let's zoom into 400%. And yeah, this is a pretty good area right here. It's going to go ahead and update itself. But there you can see, look, that noise is totally gone. The image is sharp. The noise is gone. I mean, really, I am totally done. Now, if you'll notice here, remove noise is turned on. All the others are shut off because that's all it's saying I need. Now, it's figuring all this out for me. You'll notice we don't have any comparison modes. Right now, I'm in the side-by-side uh, -side view here. You can do a split view by clicking here or just a single view by clicking here. I either use the split view or the side-by-side. -side. Let's just use the side-by-side because if I move this around, it'll move in tandem, which is really nice. The way I understand it, enhance is used when you're using the resize feature. I'm not using resize, but it's all right here for you in one piece of software which I think is really very good. Here's what I mean about speeding up your workflow. Right now, I'm happy with this image. Of course, I would recommend going around and checking all the different areas, but just click Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic and you're done with noise reduction and sharpening. It's just that quick. It's just that easy without a lot of fuss and bother. As I stated in the thumbnail to this image, high ISO, no problem. As you can see, it is no problem. By default, autopilot is turned on. It automatically goes into the autopilot mode and it says using autopilot settings. If you want to be totally hands on, you can go ahead and click on remove noise. You have your choice between normal noise reduction and a strong noise reduction. Now this is a very high ISO image, 25,600, but it chose normal. 
and look at it. It's fantastic. You'll notice the strength is up to 92, let's say 92%. It's almost up to 100%, but it does the job. Now, if I want to, I could pull this back, but I'm just taking the auto pilot settings because I think they are really accurate, but you can adjust this stuff to your heart's content. And I'm going to click this and collapse that. Now I can open up sharpen. And when I open up sharpen, watch where it says using autopilot settings. When I open up sharpen, now it says reset to autopilot settings. You can click this and go back to reset. Right now, there's a strength of 28 on the sharpening. You have a choice between lens blur and motion blur. I don't want to use that, but we can, you know, well, let me go ahead and let's pull this up and see what happens here. And you can see it's gotten a lot sharper, but it's over sharpened and that's not good. All I need to do is click reset to auto settings and I'm back to what it should be according to what the autopilot settings have determined for this image. If you want to upsize the image, you can choose a number between one and six, or you could type in the pixel count for width or height. Now, if you put in like 6,000 pixels for the width, it'll keep the aspect ratio and put the correct amount of pixels in for the height. I'm not working with that today. I will do another tutorial on that. If you want me to make a tutorial on a certain aspect of uh, Topaz Photo AI, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me go back to like about 200%. Now it's a good, every time you go and change your size, it's going to have to update itself. But it's always a good idea to go around to different parts of the image and let it update itself and see what kind of a job it's doing. So making sure there's no kind of an issue. Now I've ran this image through Topaz Denoise before and I did not get these kind of results. So I gotta tell you, in my opinion, this is a better noise reduction than I've ever seen. Now on lower ISO images up to say like 2000, 3200, Denoise did a fantastic job, but with an ISO 25,600, it did great, but not this good. I have to admit that. Let me know in the comments section below what your results have been with super high ISO images, if you have any like that, like this one. Now, let me say this real briefly. As far as a sped up workflow, I would come out of Lightroom. I come into here, autopilot determines what my problem was, and I could simply click save. That's how quick the workflow is. No fuss, no muss. I don't have to play around. And I got to tell you, so far, everything I throw into here has been really really good with using only the default autopilot settings. If you've tried Photo AI, I'd like to hear your experiences, good or bad, in the comments section below. Now I'm going to go ahead and send this back to Lightroom. I'm just going to click Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. I'll leave this in real time and you can see it's processing. It even tells you what the uh, file size change will be right here. So we'll just wait a minute or two here and see how long it takes to go back. And it's pretty quick, and now we are back in Lightroom. Let's do some pixel peeping. I'm going to compare this with the original DNG, which is right here. I'm going to Command or Control click it, and make sure I'm in the library module. And I like the XY comparison, so I can really zoom in. And let me go ahead and zoom in to like 400% right in this area, right here. Look at the difference. The right side is the original raw file. The left side is after Photo AI has worked on it. And then we can move around to different areas and see what kind of results we get. And as you can see, it has done a beautiful job. The noise is totally removed. And what can we say about that? I didn't have to get in there and determine, you know, what model do I want to use? It did that all for me. And to me, that's a step forward. Who wants to go and do all that long involved process. We've got great results with the noise and sharpen AI, but with this and the autopilot feature, why bother with all that fussing about with different AI models and adjustments when it does it all for you? And if you're not happy with the results or you wanna add a little more sharpening or a little less noise reduction, you have adjustment control right inside of Photo AI. When I started this video, I told you at the end, I would show you a comparison between Pure Raw 2 or Deep Prime, which is the same thing by DxO, and compare it to the result I got from Photo AI. So are you ready for that now? The left image is the Topaz Photo AI image. The right image is the Pro Raw 2 or the Deep Prime image. Let's zoom into this area right here at 400%. Now take a look here. 
Look at the noise that you still see in this image on the right, the Pro Raw 2 image. It's good, but this image has no noise whatsoever. And we could go to different parts of the image and take a look, as you can see. But it has done a fantastic job. Look at all that noise in there. That is Pro Raw 2. And which one do you want? The one on the left or the one in the right? For me, and I love Pro Raw 2 or Deep Prime, it does a great job. But on an image like this at ISO 25600, there's really, really no comparison. So there you go. That is an actual test result. Nothing has been doctored. Nothing has been played with here. You saw exactly what I've done. And for one last time, compare the image on the left, Topaz Photo AI, to the raw file on the right. And that was the amount of noise that we were able to clean up. And to me, that was something in the past that could never be done. But with those guys at topaz i don't know what they do but they can totally eliminate noise and for that i do applaud them that's why i've been using their products all these years because they're really innovators i think i can clearly state that now noise is not a problem for us as photographers using digital cameras whether we be bird photographers where we need those really high isos to really open up that aperture to capture that perfect bird shot or if you're like me and you do a lot of flower photography and you don't want to use a tripod well i can really open up those isos and get the images that i want and don't forget about the sharpening portion where it takes care of lens blur as well as motion blur if you have a soft lens, it'll clear that all up. If you have a cheap soft lens, it'll sharpen it up. Well, there it is, everyone. High ISO, no problem. There's definitely no problem. Topaz Photo AI, I think it's going to be a great product. Let me know what you think about this new product coming out in September of 2022. Do you think it's a great idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? I want to hear from you. Leave comments and questions. Hey, if you enjoyed this uh tutorial today please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon and that way every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it i want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with dave kelly i'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing